Welcome to Door Church Connect. And uh, this began with the newsletter that I filmed uh, at the beginning of this pandemic. There has been a three week uh, hiatus. Uh, uh, we've been uh, redesigning and uh, refiguring this into more of a podcast format and uh, as my guest host I have with me Pastor Gabe Ruby and so Gabe I'm glad that you're here uh, with me and uh, it's going to be a good time. Yeah thanks for bringing me in on this project Pastor Warner. Uh, Quick question for you what I think friend or foe would love to get into the mind of Pastor Harold Sword Warner, <laughs> but what actually kicked off this idea for you? What question are you are you actually trying to answer um, by attacking this subject? This grew out of the sermon I preached at the Prescott Bible Conference that was called "How Are You Doing?" or the biblical phraseology for that is "Is it well?" And what birthed this was a sense uh, that I had that uh, people were doing their level best uh, during this uh, season, but were also feeling the weight of uh, all that was happening and the challenges uh, in so many different uh, areas and were feeling this like uh, never before. And so when I preached that message, that question, is it well, uh, it resonated uh, because we have the platform of the Prescott Bible Conference, it resonated worldwide. Right. So where would you and or where should you begin an episode about staying connected I mean, it's such a large topic. How, how do you begin to, to take a bite out of that elephant, as it were? Well, the theme and the overall uh, emphasis has to do with wellness and wanting to dig a little bit deeper that uh, it's very easy. Uh, you know, how are you doing? People say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. No, uh, how are you doing? And uh, is it well? So trying to uh, dig a little deeper and then also to broaden things a little bit to understand that there are a number of different uh, areas relating to uh, wellness uh, in the Bible. And so beginning with the idea of door church connect behind that is you know let's investigate how do we maintain vital human and kingdom connections during a pandemic and uh, fortunately we're going to have pastor fred ruby from uh, Rotherhite, uh, the Potter's House Church there in London, who will be with us in uh, a little bit. But uh, it is investigating that key thought. How do we keep, how do we maintain kingdom connections during a pandemic? So my question to you personally would be, in times like these, what, what bothers you? or scares you, or even keeps you up at night when it comes to the connectivity of the church? Like, what are those things, those uh, those things that just kind of play in the back of your mind? What, what, what are some of the kind of things that would kind of rear their ugly heads in times like this? Well, we are so uh, used to and have been uh, for 47 years now of... Uh, meeting together, and all of a sudden now we don't have those gauges. We don't have those connections. Uh, As a pastor, I'm not seeing people uh, on a regular basis. And a lot of times as a pastor, 
it isn't just long conversations with people. It's just those initial, you know, normal interactions. And so when that is limited, then uh, my fear, I'm not giving in to fear, but my concern is that w people will disconnect. My greater concern is that there would be a spiritual and a, a social disconnect that would come out of this season. A tweet that uh, Pastor Steve uh, put out that uh, was a study done by the Barnett Group that said one third of Christians are not engaging with the church online during uh, this season of lockdown. And so I know lockdown is a relative term based on where you're living, etc. cetera, but uh, that's a pretty shocking uh, number that one third of Christians are not engaging and it went on to say that, and surprise, surprise, that that one-third uh, are also people who are more anxious, more insecure, and I think the, the biggest tell is they're more bored hmm. than others. And so uh, when I saw that, it just reinforced the idea that I'm glad that we can meet online. I rejoice in that. But it's a whole lot better than isolation, which is what that study is actually revealing, that a lot of Christians have just disconnected. And so uh, that uh, was the inspiration for this first episode. And boredom is not neutral, you know, asking David, uh, about all of that, but you were talking about that, and I, it inspired me to look at some more Barna numbers, and it said generationally, 26% of baby boomers are not attending church online, 35% of Gen Xers are not, and 50% of millennials are not, so even looking deeper at the numbers, I guess that would keep you up at night, but um, like you're saying, it's, it's something that has to be fought for, something that has to be um, intentional. So if I'm a disciple, uh, pandemic or not, I am intentionally following Jesus Christ and implementing in my life the habits, the things necessary. And it was uh, out of that that uh, uh, we thought uh, Pastor Fred would be a great uh, guest to begin with and let him talk about how he's dealing with these things, what his experiences are. And so that's uh, what we're going to investigate and uh, see where it takes us. Looks like Pastor Fred is with us on Zoom right now. Hey, Fred, it is very, very good to have you with us. And you are looking good after however many months there in quarantine in London. And, well, thank you for the uh, honor to yeah, be here. Yeah, and uh, just like the theme, uh, my sentiment is I hope it is well with you, with Norma, with your family, and uh, with your church. And uh, in discussing and thinking about who would be a great guest for this session, uh, you uh, were at the top of the list, and uh, along with Gabe, uh, we felt that your perspective would be very helpful for our church. It would be very helpful for those uh, watching, and then by extension, your own assembly as well. And so uh, we're talking about uh, staying uh, connected and the challenges that that presents to basically every pastor on planet earth right now and yeah well 
Again, thank you uh, for the invitation. We are blessed. God's been good to us, and he's, he's keeping everyone well. We also like to give a little shout out. We have a brand new granddaughter, <laughs> Zelda. Zelda. She's born on Monday, and uh, to John and Jessica, and so uh, and beautiful little girl. Yeah, so it's Mona, a good who, week for us. Yeah, Mona, who loves nicknames. Uh, right now, at the top of the list is Z. But, uh, you know, we'll have to see uh, what develops. Uh, but uh, in thinking about this, uh, I know that some of your experience has been a little different than ours in that I believe the lockdown in the UK has been for a longer period of time. But maybe you could speak to what you found to be the greatest challenge during this season for you and for your church? Well, this might sound a little bit off topic, but one of my greatest challenges was getting a haircut. <laughs> uh, all the shops were closed. I went 16 weeks without a haircut. I don't think I had done that since I was a teenager. <laughs> and, and all the guys in church, you know, they have ways of going underground and, and getting it done, but I didn't know anybody. I get my hair cut by Turkish people, and uh, I guess unless I went to a Ramadan prayer meeting or something, I was I was out of luck. So I just had to wait it out. Barely got barely got my hair cut after a long time. Was, well, there are some benefits crazy. to living in South Tucson as far as the barber shops are concerned. Yeah, I didn't have Miguel here to to, <laughs> to go into the black market with. So, and so no. But, no toilet paper uh, crisis. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Long lines. I, I uh, never st stood in a queue in my entire life, as you can see. I know the word queue now because I've st have uh, stood in lots of them. Uh, I'm talking half hour uh, to get into a grocery store um, in my whole life. And then London is so populated that you know there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. I remember walking to get some groceries and I saw a line all the way around a couple of buildings. And I called Norma and said, I'm not gonna stand in this line. And then it hit me like, I have nowhere else to go. I had to, and I stood there for an hour and became a, a you know, just a, a cooperative lemming, like everybody else, you know? Just gotta do what you gotta do. It's crazy how we get retrained, you know? Yeah, well, you, you Those gotta, are personal challenges yeah. that everybody dealt with. Yeah, it, uh... Uh, like I s said in other places, none of us were prepared. This wasn't in our, uh, uh, you've been in our annual planning sessions. Uh, so uh, December of uh, 2019, we weren't sitting around talking about uh, a global pandemic, uh, the church uh, being online, etc. So, uh, but you know, God has been good. God's uh, helping us and so uh, just uh, to kind of uh, gain traction here this uh, challenge of how do we stay connected uh, you know what is it that maybe you have observed there in London about these times and how your church has responded overall well, a couple of thoughts here. Um, I've learned a lot about urban ministry from this because people are fairly disconnected anyway, you know, by distance and by time and by, you could be anywhere among 12 million people on any given day. So uh, we, we have learned a few things about how people relate. And so like you guys, Zoom was a godsend. I only wish that I had put stock in that company before the lockdown. Uh, they were a godsend, and I was very, very pleased the way our leaders rose up almost as one man um, to organize Bible studies on Wednesday nights. And I'd say this is a tribute to Peter Jala. You know, they were they have a soldier-like mentality, and they uh, they just rose up. And, and on Wednesday nights, we had no concept of how we were going to even put together a video broadcast of any kind. We had to put those pieces together on the fly. We had to figure that stuff out. 
And these guys uh, started a series that I, I'm doing on church identity. I think I did a little bit of that in Tucson, you know, the 10 things. Oh, yeah. And we began to teach those. And I thought that was very important, especially when we're separated, to talk about our identity as a church. And But these guys, uh, they, they did a great job. Uh, uh, then people started to get inspired. You know, Sister Paulette, right? Uh, her son, Nathan, started a concert series on Instagram very spontaneously. Powerful. People really love that. You know, it's not the greatest venue for sound, but it's it's a really nice vibe, you know, and he had people tuning in every week. And so God just, these guys just rose up and started to do something. Really, that first month was really a, a, a six weeks. God was really helping us beyond, supernaturally beyond our ability. And our church did great. Our people, because they are disciples, they're genuine Christians. They've been raised on a strong diet of the preaching of God's word. In the beginning of this crisis, they rally uh, in uh, phenomenal ways. Uh, what you described, uh, people being creative, uh, uh, people rising up and filling the gap uh, in various ways. Uh, all of those things are uh, a, a blessing. And uh, I know your situation in the UK is a little different when it comes to buildings and to gathering uh, for worship. So. Before anything, my understanding is you're allowed now in England to start meeting again in safe, uh, physically distanced uh, manner? Yes, uh, at the beginning of the month, on the 4th of July, they, they call it Big Saturday here, so now they'll forever have a 4th of July celebration here as well. But uh, the 5th was <laughs> the first... Um, time they allowed people to meet we weren't quite prepared because we meet at a high school auditorium and high schools and uh, all public halls are still closed you can't uh, they can't organize anything in those so by the grace of god we have a, a couple of brothers on the board of a local uh, community center with the with the hall and uh, we were able to secure that and we turned that into uh, our own uh, makeshift studio so that we can get about 30 to 40 people in there, uh, max, uh, social, properly social distance with masks and all of that. But um, it, it's a real challenge, you know, as you're saying. And so you, there's also, even though you can meet, you can't sing technically. You're not supposed to even sing. So because there's no congregational singing, we're, we're very limited in number. We decided that we were going to continue to emphasize our online services. So if you come to our, one of our services now, there's really no live worship. We record that. Um, it's kind of like being in a studio audience, basically. Uh, but it's still good because we get to see each other. We get to interact with each other. Yeah, it's, uh, I have grown to appreciate just hearing people's voices and seeing their uh, faces. You know, that worship song, Lord, I want to hear your voice. I want to see your face. Uh, well, yeah. uh, you know what? That has to do also with uh, the brethren. Uh, hearing their voice, seeing their face is, uh, you know, amazingly therapeutic. Yeah, seeing a non-digital version of somebody's face now, it, it, it really... You're more blessed than, than you would even think, you know, uh, after not running into people. I see their faces and you just can't help but light up, you know, yeah. to see God's people smile and and just, just it's, it's a good thing, very good thing. So uh, it, it, the big issue, and we've uh, talked about this before because of church planting, the big challenge in the UK has to do with buildings. Because right. oh, yeah. the, yeah. there are not a lot of buildings or the ones that are available are atrociously expensive. And so 
you know, I've read articles uh, about the American church uh, and its addiction to its buildings. Uh, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't call it an addiction to a building. The building is uh, simply a meeting place, but there in England, uh, your challenge is uh, much, much uh, greater than ours, especially for some of your baby churches. So what do you see them doing? How are they uh, responding? Well, uh, the, the truth is about the baby churches, unless they already had like a lease on a building, uh, and if you're in, me in Metro London, inside of London, very difficult uh, because you're probably in a school or a public hall, which means it's not open. So most of them are uh, just continuing, continuing like an online presence. But what a lot of us are going to begin to do, and uh, we're doing our first on the 1st of August, is we're going out uh, our, on Saturdays, like every other Saturday. We're going to have worship, testimonies, altar calls. The parks are filled with humanity right now, and that's the good thing about being in London. It's nice, and uh, we're going outside, and we're going to take a page out of the Wesley Whitfield playbook, you know, open air worship. And uh, where we are inspired before we started, we were talking about some of the pictures of what's going on in L.A. and, and on the beaches and something we haven't really seen in 50 years. Yes. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that, I think open air is, is the time to go. And that was all really wasn't about size. It was about buildings that they didn't allow them to preach inside. So they took it outside. And uh, I think that's one of the things we're going to do. Although let, I will just say this, and you guys can continue to pray for us. More buildings are opening up. Many people are not going to come back. So there could be a silver lining in this for us in that sense in, in finding a, a good building for our church. But our short run challenge is a little bit daunting. We need prayer for that as well. You know, even if the school does open up, uh, after lockdown, our wonderful mayor here in London uh, added a 15-pound congestion charge to driving on Sunday. Sunday was the free day. It was the free day to park, the free day to drive. And so he's socking it to the church people as an, op as a, you know, an option to recoup lost monies during the lockdown. Uh, it's 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 really atrocious. I can't say too much, but um, it just reminds me of living in California. We had a, a a governor there named Gray Davis when I lived there, and he's the one that Arnold Schwarzenegger replaced. And we really need Arnold Schwarzenegger right now to come come to London. I don't you know <laughs> help us, but uh, but that's going to be an issue. Coming to church, fifteen pounds every time to drive to church, fifteen pounds. Uh, we have to figure this out. We have to get outside of that zone. God's got to help us find the right place. So I'm not trying to complain. I'm just saying that's one of the challenges right now. Uh, all of us are being uh, challenged uh, and uh, just uh, to uh, value and to maintain and to work on those connections. I don't think uh, any of us can take those for granted any longer and uh, presume uh, that uh, they have the same uh, importance for every person. So we're praying that God uh, help us. The irony as well is that in the midst of this, uh, 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 tomorrow, in fact, all of our plans for our new building, our uh, conference center, are being submitted to the city of Tucson. And so quite possibly by the end of August, we're going to be breaking ground. So uh, the, the irony of all that is not lost <laughs> on me uh, whatsoever. Praise God, man. Long time coming. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for the first episode of Door Church Connect. We had a great time speaking to Pastor Fred from London. We're going to continue this conversation in our next episode, so be sure to turn on your notifications on YouTube so you can get that when it drops next week. So, all right guys, see you next time.